Welcome to Reverse Engineering News. I'm your host, Hash. Thanks for joining. This week, I have three interesting items for you. Oral hygiene with the Philips Sonicare toothbrush. A follow-up to the Disney band Reverse Engineering, where Aaron uses Ghidra to reverse engineer the firmware. And finally, a very interesting blog I think you should read if you want to learn more about reverse engineering silicon. So let's get into the first story. Cyril purchased a Philips Sonicare toothbrush and noticed that the head on the toothbrush used NFC. Now he thought this was rather interesting. He held it up to his phone and it pulled up a website. Hey, look at that. I needed a new toothbrush anyways. Oral hygiene's important. We see it wants to open a web page. Hey, and it takes us to Philip's website. He thought that was interesting, so he decided to read out the rest of the information using NFC tools. Now, with NFC tools, you can hold it here, and you see some interesting things. The type of tag, an in tag 213, a serial number. This is important because this also has a password. You know, because toothbrushes need passwords, apparently, in order to update values that are in here. The value that's in here that's of most importance is in the memory area. And it keeps track of how long it's been used. So when you turn on your toothbrush, you brush your teeth, it actually has a little counter every second that goes by. Now, at first, this was really interesting. I read the whole article and I thought, why would you build something this complex? Like why would the head of the toothbrush need an NFC tag inside of it with memory and you write back and forth from the toothbrush, all this stuff. It seemed like way overkill to me. And then I thought, what if the toothbrush was connected to an app? And then they know who you are, they know how often you're buying toothbrush heads, they can market stuff to you, all this, all these kinds of things. Now, this toothbrush is the cheapy model. So while it does talk to the head and it'll let you know when you need to replace it, it doesn't actually connect to an app. The more expensive Philips uh, toothbrushes connect to an app. So then I was still kind of baffled and I thought, why would you do this? And I realized, well, you're competing with commoditized toothbrushes because you could just brush your teeth yourself and really, can you sell this for more than a dollar? Maybe a couple bucks. They put a bunch of fancy colors on it and things, but, but it's a toothbrush, right? Uh, it's been around for a long time. But these things are like 10 bucks a piece. They can be even more. And so I realized since it's basically the same thing, it's actually less plastic, it probably makes sense to put a little NFC tag in there and then to harass the user and make them feel bad that it's time to replace it when, I don't know, who knows how long they could, they can actually go. My old Sonicare toothbrush just lets me brush and brush uh, and, and doesn't uh, harass me about the head. So then all was right with the world and I figured, oh, okay, this is all just to get more money and my curiosity was satisfied. Now Cyril, he finds out this password is on here and so he uses a HackRF to sniff the communication between the toothbrush and the toothbrush head. He sees the password is sent in the clear and then he is able to use NFC tools with the password to update the data values that are in here. Now, apparently each head has its own unique password, and he believes that that password is generated based on the unique ID. So probably some algorithm that the toothbrush handle knows when it sees this ID, it performs some calculation, and that's what the password is. Now, you should know that if you just randomly guess passwords, after three attempts, the head will lock itself out. Now, I mean, it's still gonna work, you know, it's, it's still a toothbrush, and. And it's like an escalator, you know, it can only turn into stairs, right? It can't ever really break. Um, so, so you're, you know, there's not going to be a problem there, but just know that if you randomly guess passwords on your, your mom's toothbrush, uh, she might be pissed. Now I reached out to Philips Sonicare for comment. They had their spokesperson TI get back to me with the following. Keep your mind on your grind and off of mine's all right. I think that sums it up. Now on to the Disney band. Aaron used Ghidra to label the firmware that he dumped off of it. He labeled a bunch of the functions and he figured out how it works. 
He then set up two ESP32s. One is a transmitter and the other is a receiver so that he could trigger the band to transmit and then see the data that it was transmitting. He has his current detection system set up watching the band so that he can see when it starts to spike so he knows that his transmit signal that he sent to it actually woke it up and then he shows the data that was sent out. Now, it sends an ID, a counter value, and the battery level is what the band transmits every single time. And it seems to blast this and then it stays on for quite a while transmitting information until it finally goes back to sleep. The code he set up for the ESP32 is on his GitHub and there's a link down in the description to that. Now finally, silicon reverse engineering. I love silicon reverse engineering, everything about it. There's a blog that you should check out. It's been around a long time. This isn't like breaking news. It didn't come out last week, but I don't know how many people actually go and check it out. It's by a gentleman named Ken Sharif, and he does a lot of very in-depth write-ups on the structure of silicon and how it works. He has a write-up on the 555 timer where, and, and this is a very simple part, like this is the 555 timer, right? This is from Radio Shack. Uh, you know, you probably don't know what that is. Like they sell t-shirts now, I think. He shows exactly how every part of that silicon works all the way down to even how is a transistor constructed? What are all the little pieces? How do you look at silicon, recognize the features and decode that, turn it into transistors, turn it into gates, into flip-flops, all these things to understand how those circuits work. He also has a good amount of information on 8086 processors, which is the x86 architecture, and how that works. And he really has great high definition images and he shows you every piece of that processor and breaks it down. If you just wanna sit back and learn about something, read some incredibly interesting information, you cannot go wrong with his blog. That's all I have for you this week. Like and subscribe, uh, click the heart button, thumbs up, do all those things. We'll see you next week.